Hi there. I'm going to be taking a look today at War Games Atlantic's First World War Germans. Okay, so War Games Atlantic's a um, mid to late war German infantry. So it says 1916 to 1918 on the box. You can get away with this slightly earlier. I'll explain when we go. This allows you to build 30 28 mil figures. And as you can see on the reverse, you have a little bit of text about the uh, the First World War and then this box allows you to build 30 with MP18s, MG8-15 grenades, pistols, blah 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 blah, so on and so forth. Everything you get in the box. So, taking a look at the sprues. You get one sprue times six. Sorry, one sprue times five, giving you your 30. So six figures on each. Um, where to begin? Let's start with the accessories, I suppose. We get uh, quite a large amount of potato masher grenades, uh, including some being held in hands. So these two down here. You have a trench bomb, so six heads on it. We also have entrenching tool, uh, broom handle, mauser, some binoculars, additional ammo pouches, holstered guns, empty style helm. We have our first two sets of heads. So you have a set of six uh, with field, feldmus, field hat, field cap. You have Stahlhelm with um, gas mask. If I flip around to the other side, you also have Stahlhelm without the gas mask, the gas mask containers, one for each, and then Picklehelm plus a additional officer's helmet or cap. Entrenching tools and bayonets cased. We have Additional arms, or rather, right arms. Um, a rifle that's surplus to requirements, so it could be used for base dressing or slung on somebody's back. This is a magazine for the machine gun. The machine gun over here. Uh, so this was actually still water cooled, so it, as far as light machine guns go, it's not really weighed a ton have a slung rifle and then quite a few being carried. We have um, the MG18, MP18, all the edge catch me up, of course machine pistol. Um, and then we also have the machine guns um, bipod. So, body-wise, one kneeling, several advancing, one more or less stationary, and then one as if he's about to toss a grenade. So a bit of movement in there, without being overly complicated. Now, as far as the 1915 part goes, pickle hives were starting to be phased out by 1915. Um, so you can go... 1915, 1916 with this. If you want to go early war, the piping is missing, as are the buttons off the front of the tunics. So you would have to paint uh, brass buttons onto the uh, the fold on the tunic and then red piping all the way around. Also on the cuffs, uh, you're missing the more elaborate cuff piece, but you could get away with just red trim on that. It will do a similar job. Uh, not ideal, mind you. The putties do give them away as being later on, so 1915 onwards. Um, 1914, apart from having the more distinctive uniform with the trim, they were also wearing uh, full boots. They didn't have the putties. So while it says 1916 on the box, you could get away with 1915. 1914 is a bit of a stretch, but depending who you're playing with, 
it doesn't really make a huge difference. Um, a lot of people aren't that much of a stickler for uniform infractions. Yeah, so it just comes down to yourself and your friends. So let's have a look at some of these built. Okay, so I've built a Spruceworth. I've gone for a variety of um, helmets just to show you how they look. So we have this gentleman with the field cap on. Went together fairly easily. Um, there is no sniper in the box. Uh, I'm not sure. I know obviously snipers were used and they had different ways of doing it. So if you could get yourself a little um, scope, you could probably turn him into a sniper quite happily depending on the mechanics of the rules you're using. It's quite nice. Taking a look at our style helm. I've got this gentleman screaming bloody murder as he goes forward. Sprue gates aren't an issue. Um, there is a seam line. They are plastics so you will get seam lines. It's not overly egregious and should be easy enough to clean off. Like I said, the sprue gates are in innocuous places so you can clip them off quite easily without worrying about clipping into detail. Gas mask, canister wise, there are two different types so you get three of each. As far as I can tell it doesn't really matter who gets what. I've seen somebody saying they had difficulty putting them on. I'm not sure why. Do glue them on before you glue the heads on or you will run into problems but you've got three that sit around the neck and in front and then you've got three like this gentleman with the MP18 where it actually goes over one shoulder and under the arm so it's slung to the back. I haven't bothered putting the entrenching tools on anybody. You can see there's a slight bit of pitting there where you've got the um, bread bag although that could just be a fold in the cloth, so it's nothing major. Gas masks have that uh, very distinctive look. You can see another fellow here tossing a grenade. Then I have a couple with the pickle hammer, including this gentleman smoking his pipe. Once I seen the corn cob pipe, I knew he had to be an officer. So, officer he became with the gas mask on and the binoculars. It does sit away from the chest a little. If that's something that's going to annoy you, you could um, strip down, file down the back of this, or take a, a sculpting tool or a knife to it just to get it a little flusher. Or you can just do away with the gas mask altogether and just stick with the uh, the bins. But overall, it's a, a lovely set. Anybody getting into First World War gaming with games like um, Blood and Valor, I think this is an excellent set. Um, in one file swoop, you'll get most of what you need infantry-wise, and then you can just pick up metals for commander or sniper or machine gun teams if you need them. Um, there was a little bit of artifacting on some of the bayonets, so they've got a slightly bubble rounded end to them, which you can file down. I haven't bothered because it doesn't upset me too much. Um, I'd rather have that a little thicker than too thin because it'll be more prone to snapping then. But yeah, that is the uh, War Games Atlantic First World War Germans. So there we have it, a lovely kit. Very good for your mid to late war Germans, like I was saying, and also potentially some of the, uh, the Austro-German allies, um, even into the Second World War, where people were using older kit. So that there's a lot of options and uh, a lot of scope for this box set. Uh, let me know what you think about it below, whether or not you'd be jumping on board, um, and also whether or not you managed to get that machine gun onto its bipod, because I hear a lot of people are having difficulties with it. I've not had to tackle it yet. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.